You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Good morning and welcome to Focus on the Liturgy here on WNDZ 750 AM Catholic Community of Faith. I am Todd Williamson from the Office for Divine Worship. And I'm Timothy Johnston from St. Thomas the Apostle in Hyde Park. And I'm Danielle Noe from Liturgy Training Publications, also of the Archdiocese. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter to both of you. Happy Easter. Happy and Easter. to our listeners, we are here every fourth Wednesday of the month. We are joining you today here in the third week of Easter. The third week of, uh, that was a great, uh, Danielle always picks out the the break music. And that, that was a great one to start with, Danielle, just starting with Alleluia. That's right. The, the, the return, the return is uh, of the Alleluia. Um, the return of, uh, of flowers and, and, and white and light and all of it uh, in this great season of Easter. Um, we had the Triduum that brought us in. And uh, last month we talked to... We talked on on the Triduum. Hopefully, our listeners hopefully our listeners had uh, uh, good experiences, and uh, hopefully, last month's show maybe opened something up for them that they experienced this year. Um, it, they are powerful liturgies. They are. Just a, one little quick anecdote was on Sunday Easter Sunday morning. You know, we had a filled church, as many of our churches I'm sure were. Um, and afterwards, I was out on our plaza at St. Thomas, and, and several people came up to me um, afterwards saying, oh, they, they've lived in the neighborhood a long time, and this was their first time at the church, and they just thought it was such a great celebration. Really? And, you know, how beautiful it was on Easter Day anyway. Um, so people were just out talking and celebrating and just enjoying. Uh, it was a resurrection day for sure. Nice, nice. That's really nice. I, I was in a parish where... I'd never experienced this before, and it was really, really cool. They had their own permanent fire pit. Oh, sure. oh yes. Um, you sent us that so text. Cool. Danielle yeah, sent so Timothy and we... I a text of this fire pit <laughs> <laughs> on, yeah, on Holy so Saturday. Cool. You, uh, you know, uh, and then it was off. You know, they have a large campus, so it was a, a good distance back, so perfect for the procession. It was, it was really lovely. Talk, I, talk a little bit about that, just for the listeners. Why would a permanent fire pit be? Obviously, our show is on the Easter season, by the way, but <laughs> we got to start with the, with the Triduum. But Danielle, talk about that. That's a great way to start the show. Well, right? You know, the, the Triduum, of course, is the, the high point of the church year, and the climax in that is, is the Great Easter Vigil. But when you have a permanent fire pit fixture of, you know, the, you're blessing that fire on the high point of the year, this fire that is then, you know, the Paschal candle is lit from that fire. It's the, the blazing fire that conquers the dark darkness, symbolic of that Christ has risen from the dead, that he conquers the darkness. But to have that permanent fixture and that reminder throughout the throughout year, the whole um, year right? on the church, yeah, on the church property and that, and that having a, a permanent fixture gives it elevates that that ritual act it gives it dignity um and you know and i certainly don't want to disparage other practices but you know we, not many of us have have a property a church property that can have that so we you know we use what we're able to use whether it's you know uh, those um 
fire you know, pits, the, the, little fire the, yeah, those little fire, fire pits, pits that we can purchase elsewhere. But to ha actually have the space to do that and to install it, it, it was really cool. And I knew exactly where to go. You know, I'd never been to the parish before, but seeing it there, it's like, oh, okay, that's where we're going to start. Nice. Um, it was really cool. Oh my gosh! And 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 of course that that celebration opened up this whole season of Easter, the culmination, right? Of mm -hmm. uh, we uh, those of us who who work in liturgy and and uh, teach and study liturgy, we'll often we'll talk about it as um, the third part of the full ninety days, right? The, the full part of the, yeah. the 90 day cycle. And Timothy, when we talk about 90 days, what, what is that? So make sure I do my math right here. <laughs> so that, that 40 days of, of Easter, or excuse me, of Lent, and then we come to the 50 days um, uh, of Easter. And so it, it, and then we've talked about this on the show before, Lent really doesn't exist without Easter. Right. You know, it was something that was designed before, uh, in a practical sense for those being initiated into the church as a way of preparation and it grew over time and so it comes out of the idea that we have life in christ and in order we can work backwards to do that reflection so yeah 90 days but we have 50 days of this season um to to rejoice to celebrate um and to unpack to unpack hopefully hopefully yeah um i had a mom come up to me or actually one of the infants that we baptized at the vigil she came up to me a few days ago and she said, um, I didn't want to wash his hair. I, it, <laughs> oh. He just smelled so good. And I said, the that's chrism. great. Right. The, the sacred chrism, you know, anointed at infant baptism. And then those that were confirmed, of course, uh, received that as well. And the odor of Christ, the odor of Christ. That's exactly what I talked to her about. I said, well, you don't. Yeah, I don't wash it. And she's like, well, even after I washed it, it's still there. And for me, that conversation reminded me of the joy of the whole season. The, yes. These whole 50 days of the odor of Christ that we have been. Uh, we share in this resurrection because of our baptism and we go out and we profess and proclaim that resurrection in the works that we do and and, and in the works that we do and re by all our senses mm -hmm. right the the resurrection floods our senses okay this is we're, we're, this is going to make this makes us sound like such geeks but <laughs> so i have after the chrism mass so the chrism mass is holy week uh, mm -hmm. it, it, and uh, every diocese celebrates it. We've talked about it here before. It's where the bishop blesses all the oil and consecrates the chrism for all the sacraments yep. in his parishes in his diocese. So I brought back to our office, Danielle and Timothy, oh, yeah. an empty balsam bottle. <laughs> and, and I opened it and I just set it in the middle of our office. So when you walk into our office, even even yeah. today, when you walk into our office, you smell the chrism. You smell it. It's so funny. <laughs> it's a great smell. Yes. yes, it is a great smell. Todd, the same thing would happen to me when I was in St. Cloud in the worship office. I would, after coming back from the chrism mass, that I would have empty bottles. I would have, yeah, and people would just flock to my office like, oh, it smells so good in here. <laughs> and again, for the listeners, chrism which is used to um, anoint uh, uh, infants after baptism, uh, 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 adults in confirmation, priests and bishops in ordination. Uh, we use it to anoint the, a the brand altar, new yeah. altar and a brand new church. Um, in, in essence, we, we anoint those things that are images of Christ, right? That, are, that yeah. are not just symbols, but are images of Christ. And it's, it's olive oil that has balsam, which is a, 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 a perfume, an oil-based perfume. And that's ancient tradition, right? Mm -hmm. oh, even pre-Christian, even pre-Christian. Yeah, yeah. uh, but ancient in our church for that one particular oil. Uh, and that that's what the balsam is. It's, a, uh, it's just, the Easter smell. It is the Easter smell. And, and I'm going to share this, and I probably derail our conversation. But so this past Sunday, we had um, our faith formation. Uh, we do family formation. And so we did a tour of the church, and I was kind of going through that. And one of the things we did, we stopped at the baptismal font. And because uh, it's up front because of, of Easter, and, you know, the kids gathered around and the parents were all there. And uh, we talked about the water. We talked about what happened at the vigil. So a little mystagogy. Yeah. Though they didn't know that's what we were doing. So breaking open the mysteries of what we celebrated. But I, I passed around the chrism very carefully <laughs> um, so that all the kids could smell it. And you could just see their eyes sort of uh, widen uh, you know, a little bit. Well, only one was like, oh, I don't really like that smell. Oh, everyone um, else. <laughs> but everyone else, but, but it's like, at least you're honest. You know, yeah, like, in that yeah. sense. And then we talked about, since you brought this up, Todd, so what made me think of it, is we talked about when we went into the sanctuary about 
how the altar is a symbol of Christ and it too is anointed just as you were at baptism. So we kept the kind of those connections with all of that. And these are great things to kind of break open in the Easter season. Oh my gosh. So uh, Danielle, he just mentioned it and I knew we were, we would get to it and it's fine. And it, so the, the, the whole season, it's, it's, you know, 50 days. It's a, it's a 50 day long feast, right? The, the patristics called it what a week of weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and, in 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 some ways, uh, at least in regard to those who were initiated uh, at the Easter Vigil, those who died in the waters of the font um, and were raised a new creation in image of Christ, uh, which is what happened to all of us in our baptism, uh, the, the, um, uh, for them, this whole season is, a, and, and, and for us too, <clears throat> this whole season is about mystagogy. And mm -hmm. Timothy just mentioned, Danielle, talk a little bit about what, what do we mean mystagogy and, and what, what does it have to do with Easter? Sure. So uh, our listeners are probably familiar with the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, which is what um, the adults who were just initiated at Easter have gone through this process. Um, there's four stages in the process, and the very last part after initiation is the period of mystagogy. Um, and so Timothy mentioned how this is the time to break open the mysteries, to reflect on the mysteries. And, and this is really that concentrated period of time for the neophytes, which is um, the, newly baptized. the word for the newly baptized, break open the mysteries of what just happened. Yeah. So being able to reflect on the baptism, how did they feel? Right. What did what did they observe? What did they experience? How does that bring them into a deeper relationship with Christ and the church and the world? Um, so reflecting on all of the sacraments of initiation and, you know, we often refer to mystagogy specifically with the initiation process. Um, but as Todd mentioned, you know, everyone who is baptized is in this ongoing period of mystagogy. We're not perfect. We fall. <laughs> we continue to experience the sacramental rites. We continue to experience the mass week to week, week to month to month, year to year. We're continuing to develop our relationship with Christ and others. Um, and so we're always in this period of reflecting on what we've experienced and how does that bring us into a deeper relationship with Christ? It's all about conversion. We're always in this process of conversion of heart. Um, and that's really what Mr. Goji reminds us of. And I think the neophytes, given that they have this period of, of that concentrated time, that particularity of, of their focus, it serves as a reminder to those who were baptized at other times that this is what the Christian life is about. This is what, you know, they've chosen this. They've chosen to take on this new life God has chosen and they that. serve as a reminder for us of what it all means. And, you know, Easter season, of course, journeying through Lent for the baptized was, you know, to get to the waters of the fun at Easter to renew that baptism. And that's what really Mr. Goji helps us do is, is to renew that promise and to refocus our lives on what does baptism call us to be? Who does it mean? What does it mean for us to be um, uh, priest, prophet, and king, just as Christ was? What does it mean to be disciples? How do we renew that faith? Yep. Yeah, it's, it, it's, the, it's the season to come to a deeper understanding of who we are and, and whose we are. Um, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll pick it up there. We going into our first break, Danielle, hold on to that thought. Um, cause let, let's, after the break, let's pick it up right from there. We're talking about the Easter season. We're breaking it open. We're doing mystagogy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back after these messages.
Catholic Charities Blossoms of Hope brunch will be held on Sunday, April 30th at Drury Lane in Oak Brook in support of the Loving Outreach to Survivors of Suicide program, also known as LOSS. This inspiring brunch is an opportunity for all members of the LOSS community to gather with its founder, Father Charles Ruby, in support of the program and to celebrate the resilience that can be attained over time. For more than 40 years, LOSS has been compassionately accompanying individuals and families on their journey through grief. The program has been recognized by the United Nations as a model for helping those grieving this tragic event in their lives. In-person and online resources help people around the country find healing and joy in life again. To learn more about LOSS and the Blossoms of Hope brunch, visit catholiccharities.net. I feel special. <laughs> I feel great. I got good grades. We've seen a huge surge in our kids now meeting or exceeding grade level. Come check us out. You may have never thought we were an option before. Our school communities provide students with academic excellence and character education in a supportive and stable learning environment. Come see for yourself. Visit artchicago.org slash find a school. Do you have an old bicycle that's not being used? Consider donating it to Catholic Charities Veterans Bike Project of Lake County. Skilled volunteers are refurbishing bicycles to make them safe and ready to be used by veterans to get to and from their new places of work. We also gratefully accept financial contributions that are used to purchase bike helmets and other safety accessories. Our veterans have faithfully served the United States and now it is our privilege to serve them. For more information on the Veterans Bike Project of Lake County, call 847-782-4219. That's 847-782-4219. Welcome back to Focus on the Liturgy. We are talking about the Easter season. Danielle, were you able to hear that music coming in? I was not. Uh, it was the Celtic <laughs> Alleluia. Was that great? Oh, okay. That great organ fanfare that led into it. Uh, Mike's doing a great job of picking the ones for for uh, uh, the breaks here. But uh, we're talking about the Easter season. We're breaking it open. And uh, right before that last break, we were talking literally just about that. That, that Easter is a season of mystagogy. Mystagogy is, it comes from the Greek word to um, reveal the secrets. Yeah. And the yeah. secrets are in reference, the mysteries, reveal the mysteries is a better, uh, better term. And the mysteries are the sacraments that we have just celebrated uh, in the uh, Triduum, uh, the Holy Vid, the Holy, uh, Easter Vigil, and Easter Sunday morning. So, and, and, and specifically, Dan, Danielle, you were telling us about the, uh, uh, the this period for the neophytes, they break open and come to a deeper understanding of what God has done to them in their baptism, confirmation, and reception of the Eucharist. But what about for those of us who are already baptized? What about those of us who were baptized uh, as infants? Or what is mystagogy for us then in this Easter season? Yeah, I, I, I kind of piggybacking on what Danielle says, I, I think... Uh in some ways we're doing the same thing. 
um, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> is because every time we come to the Eucharistic table or every time we are present at and, and participate in baptism, even though we're not the one being baptized at that moment, every time we have water sprinkled on us or um, <clears throat> we go to the sacrament of reconciliation, whatever it might be, we have to take time to step back and reflect on what, as you just said, like, what is God doing in this for me or how is God being revealed to me? In how this? am I encountering the divine? That's how am I better, encountering yeah. Christ? How in this sprinkling, in this sacrament, yeah. in this? Yeah, I mean, because it's it is it, it encounters a perfect word because it's a new encounter in this it, at that time in your life, right at that moment um, with all the history that you bring to that that moment, that encounter. Yeah, and and yeah, you have to step back and, and really consider. Okay, God, what what is this in my life, and how how is this being revealed to me? But the other thing that while Daniel was talking that was kind of going through my mind uh, was we, we get to Easter and we talked, you know, in our Lenten show, and we've talked about this at other times, that the Lenten season, of course, is about um, conversion and preparing ourselves for this renewal of our baptismal promises. And the image that came to my mind was in some ways as we renew those promises on, on at the vigil or Easter Sunday morning, depending on which or both liturgies you went to, um, in a sense, our eyes are opened anew. Uh, hopefully, because of the experience oh, wow. yeah. of conversion that we've had in the Lenten season, and we come to that moment, and we we encounter those words of of once again professing our faith in Jesus Christ, and that we do believe that He died and rose for us, that we might have life, and if we believe that. Year after year, hopefully that deepens and we have a new understanding or we grow an understanding. One, yeah. And yeah, and that that changes us. So the conversion of Lent, and Danielle referenced this earlier, continues in a joyful Easter sort of way as we, we go in because now we can break that open. Okay, well what what did I let go of so that I can be free in this season? Remember it we we didn't only renew our profession of faith we also renewed our renunciation right of right. anything that opposes that faith yeah. danielle you and i talk you and i love uh, well, i think you do i i know i do love this term and we always we always kind of play with it but it's the uh, so easter for those of us who have, who who um are baptized um for all of us who are baptized easter is the so what season right so what maybe talk a little bit about that well you know, I, um, if I can piggyback on something that Timothy talked about, about this is, a, an op this is our experience of new life. We place that belief on our lips and on our heart. We're not play acting, right? So the whole liturgical year, I think it would be easy to step back and say, oh, okay, we're, we're re you know, just mimicking historical events. But no, we are, we are living it. So we are actually physically living this resurrection, replacing that at belief in resurrection on our lips in this moment. The liturgy tells our story of faith, what we are being imbued with and internalizing and taking that into our day-to-day -day life. What does it mean to be baptized into the Paschal mystery? What does it mean to be an Easter people, right? Mm -hmm. So throughout this show, you've been hearing a lot of hallelujah music and um, our listeners may say, well, of course it's Easter. We, you know, you put the Alleluia away during Lent. Of course, we're going to sing a lot of Alleluia's. It's joyful, but Alleluia is our song. You know, that's what we are called to sing this joy of Christ's resurrection and the new life that that brings. But it's not just about salvation for me as an individual that yes, Christ died for me, but Christ died for all of us and rose for all of us so that we are all brought into the heavenly kingdom. But baptism charges us with a responsibility to also bring that kingdom in the here and now. And, and that's that kind of parallel between Easter and incarnation, if you will, that we're Easter people, but also incarnational people. So that in celebrating the Lord's resurrection, we have to embody who Christ is and be Christ in the world to heal the brokenness that we exist, that exists every day, right? Yep. This world is broken. There's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of misery, 
but Christ help Christ gives us the opportunity to look through the lens of suffering through the joy of hope and what that brings through the Paschal mystery and to bring that hope to other people. Yeah. yeah through the Paschal mystery, right? It's the mystery of life through death. It, right. it, it's the mystery of courage through discouragement. Yeah. It's, it's the mystery of hope through despair. It's the mystery, right? It's the mystery yeah. of wholeness through illness. Exactly. Uh, that, that's the Paschal. And that's what our baptism gives us. It gives us that lens through which to see and understand our lives, the, the yeah. world, mm-hmm. our place in it. And so, Danielle, that whole so what Easter being a so what season. So what that I've renewed my baptism. So what that I renewed my renunciation of Satan. So what that I have uh, been sprinkled with the, uh, with the water. Yeah, with the water of yeah. the font. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and you just, Danielle, you just answered that question. So what? It means, it means I'm called to live differently now. Yeah. Then I, then I, then I lived three weeks ago. Exactly. <laughs> right. Before the right. Easter vigil, before Easter Sunday. I see so many people, I I should never read social media comments because it aggravates me, but (laughs) if you think, uh, you know, we just celebrated baptism and, and those that aren't of the faith or practicing or even Christian or will look at Catholics or other Christians and say, it's magic water. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. It's just a little trickle of water. But the reality of what that symbolizes is change, new life, that we are called to live differently. And that's what that means. Yes. That's the so what question. Yep, yep, exactly. Uh, I, I love I love how even um, we'll talk, uh, coming up on a break here, we'll talk a little bit more in the second half of the show about it. But, uh, but one of the things that uh, many parishes do throughout the Easter season is they mm-hmm. begin Mass with the sprinkling rite. Uh, which replaces the penitential act, right? Okay. And the words, I don't know if you guys, the, the word that the missal uses for the sprinkling rite, which is different than the renewal of baptismal promises, right. not the same thing, right? But in for the sprinkling rite, the word that the missal uses is this memorial of our baptism. Oh, sure, yeah. Mm. This yeah. memorial, like mm. it's, it's, it, it's happening now, yeah. it, right? Mm-hmm. It's not just a, me- it's not just a reminder of, It's a memorial of. So all through the Easter season, our baptism is being renewed Yeah, every time we experience that sprinkling, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just picturing kids uh, sort of in the (laughs) pew trying to get wet uh, when that's happening. (laughs) Um, So use lots of water if you're listening. Yeah, uh, yeah. (laughs) And we all laugh and we all laugh at the flinch, you know, that that comes from it. but. It, the idea the idea is yes using lots of water that's <laughs> for for yeah. that i mean throughout it, the whole season it, it was funny at the the easter vigil i uh i was godparent to a teenager and his brother was also being baptized and the priest likes to use a lot of water which was wonderful and as soon as the, his brother was baptized he he exclaimed very loud, that was a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> As it should goals, be. But, right, exactly. Yep, there's, we, have, we have a colleague who always says that the baptismal water should be deep enough to drown in. <laughs> well, that's the symbol. I mean, that's yeah. the symbolism. It exactly. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to break open more symbols of the Easter season. Stay with us for more Focus on the Liturgy. We'll be back after these messages.
Caring adults make all the difference in the lives of adolescents. Catholic Charities understands this, and our mentorship programs provide a free opportunity for young adults to spend time with volunteers who genuinely care about them. This program is ideal for youth aged 9 through 12 who may need support navigating the challenges of childhood and early adolescence. Our amazing volunteers service friends who help youth recognize their strengths and empower them to reach their full potential. Catholic Charities conducts a thorough background check on every volunteer, and our program coordinator closely monitors and supports every relationship. Mentoring is a fun after-school program that can help young adults build confidence and enjoy fun activities with their peers, too. To learn more, visit catholiccharities.net or call 312-655-7970 in Cook County and 847 847- 782-4224 in Lake County. We're connecting youth with great role models. Join us today. I am a seminarian. The church needs compassionate and well-trained priests to help guide each of us through life. What inspires me, what draws me always to the priesthood is continue to see priests be a beacon of hope for other people. You can play a part in the education of these young men as they prepare for a life of service to others. I want to be that beacon of hope too, and it it sets my heart on fire. To support our seminarians, make your gift at archchicago.org slash seminarian fund or call 312-534-7959. The Cemetery Ministry is a core ministry of our Catholic faith tied to the corporal works of mercy. It's comforting to know that our Catholic cemeteries are caring for the remains of our loved ones awaiting the resurrection. There are 44 Archdiocese of Chicago Catholic cemeteries willing to help you in your time of loss. Call 708-449-6100 or visit catholiccemeterychicago.org. Catholic Cemeteries, serving the Catholic community since 1837. You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Thanks for letting us be part of your morning. Now again, Catholic Chicago. Welcome back to the second half hour of Focus on the Liturgy. If you are just joining us, I'm Todd Williamson from the Office for Divine Worship at the Archdiocese of Chicago. And I'm Timothy Johnston from St. Thomas the Apostle in Hyde Park. And I'm Danielle Noe from LTP. We are breaking open the Easter season and the elements of the Easter season. We said earlier what we're doing in the show is actually some mystagogy. That's <laughs> we're, right, that's right. We're, we're breaking open the mysteries that we have just celebrated uh, in the uh, Easter vigil and on uh, Easter Sunday morning. Um, and Dan- Danielle and Timothy, uh, at the, as we ended that first half hour, we, we, we were starting to talk about some of the elements of the Sunday liturgies during the Easter season. Mm-hmm. Particularly, we were talking about the sprinkling rite. What What are some other? What are other? What's your favorite element of the Easter liturgies? Well, I was just thinking. I don't know if this is my favorite, but it of course is integral. Um, I think an important element of the Easter liturgies is the music. Um, and so, just as we heard coming or going into break and coming out of break, we heard a, a, a hopefully a familiar song to most of us or all of us. But I think, uh, as as Danielle even pointed out, you know, we're singing a lot of Alleluia's in this season. Um, but 
we probably all have our favorite songs. And I, I was looking through the hymnal uh, right before Easter and thinking, oh my gosh, there's so many good things. There's not enough weeks to sing all of this. <laughs> because again, I think when we look at some of those those musical texts, it, it reinforces what we've celebrated, uh, Christ is risen today, um, or it's breaking open the mystery that is celebrated. And so there are some texts, and of course, I don't have them in front of me, but that kind of uh, deepen sort of the understanding of that suffering um, and resurrection and what resurrection means in our, our life. So, so sing your favorite the music. Easter I love songs. that. Yes. Danielle, <laughs> what about you? Well, of course we have to talk about the Paschal candle, right? <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk about the Paschal candle. So um, our listeners probably know that my favorite part of the vigil is the blessing of the fire and the inscription of the Paschal candle, but that, that Paschal candle which leads the procession into the church is then placed by its rightful place by the ambo throughout the 50 days of Easter. Um, after Easter, of course, it's returned to its place at the baptismal font, but you know, it's, it's in that primary location by the ambo throughout the 50 days as this primary symbol of the light of Christ. Um, if we remember back to the vigil, the text that goes with the inscription of that the priest says, Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age forever. I love that last part of that text, to him be glory and power through every age and forever. And when you see that Paschal candle lit in the church space that's that constant reminder that he has conquered through conquered death he has lifted us up from our suffering and that same paschal candle which will be lit at every baptism that same paschal candle that's lit at every funeral yes it gives us hope it really is the Paschal candle is a, a, a symbol of Christ, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. it, it, the, the light of Christ that transforms the darkness, uh, the light of Christ that has come into the world. Yeah. It, 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 and, and Danielle, you, you reminded me that it's lit, yes, from every day, every, every Sunday, every mass of the Easter yep. season uh, at the Ambo where the word, uh, the living mm -hmm. word of Christ, Christ's own word is yep. proclaimed. But then at, at every funeral, and and that image of um, the past, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, like a century standing over this <laughs> yeah. casket of a loved one, right? Uh, the, the the presence of Christ at the casket of this loved one is it's very powerful. Yeah, it, it's because uh, you both have kind of noted this. Uh, we get the light at a baptism from the Paschal candle, of course, um, as as we are baptized, and and I love that image of the. Uh, a century sort of standing over, but it is the light of Christ that guides us throughout our life. And so it is, it is from the very beginning of our Christian life, we have the light of Christ within us and it carries us forward to the very final days mm -hmm. of this earthly life, but it, it hopefully ushers us into. Yeah. Uh, That's why we hold lit candles during the renewal, renewal yeah, of our baptismal exactly. promises. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And, 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 that, and so that, and the idea that over the course of the year, just like Christ, that candle will spend itself, right? Yes. Just, just like Christ, that, that candle will empty itself as it burns yeah. down uh, after uh, every parish baptism, uh -huh. every parish funeral. Yeah, I'm with you, Danielle. Yeah, <laughs> if, you, if we literally interpreted what a Christian looked like in the world, right, we would be all vested in our, our white garments, holding that candle yes. and giving that candle out, right? That I think that's spreading, a beautiful image. Spreading we that often light. depict that, that in illustration. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. yeah. Spreading the light. That is mm -hmm. a that is a that is a great image, Danielle. And, and that's the image at the vigil, right? Like yes. that, mm -hmm. but that, so hopefully we take, yeah, take that out. Like the spreading of the light that happens yep. uh, when we come into the church is the spreading of the light that we do throughout the Easter season and all throughout of our the life. World. Through, yeah, throughout I mean, the world. Yeah. That's, that's our job. Like we are the candle, the light of Christ that's yeah. within us. Yeah. And I mean, how many people yeah. uh, I know that will talk about that moment in the vigil where the, the yeah. light literally spreads like a wave mm -hmm. right? through the, oh through yeah. The, well, that, that's the image of what, what the world should look like exactly. with, yeah. with us in it now that we have renewed our baptism. Yeah. 
Oh, other other. One of my. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go, go ahead. I think you were going. I to... was just gonna to say one of my favorite experiences of the Easter Vigil was actually at St. Anne's in Barrington because they have skylights in the church, and so if you imagine a church in darkness everyone receiving the light of Christ, you could see the reflection oh, wow. of everyone's candles on the window. And it, you were surrounded completely then by light. And this interplay of what's going on in heaven is going on here in earth and what we're called to extend. Oh, wow. It was pretty powerful. Oh, wow. That would be. Other yeah. other elements of the so uh, Easter liturgies are marked by um, the Paschal candle, the sprinkling rite, the music, flowers, uh, the you know yeah. the, the the smell of, of the Easter lilies. Yes, the Easter lilies. Yeah. What what other what other elements <laughs> of the Easter liturgies speak to the two of you? Of course, the sun, Gloria, has yes, come back. Yes, yes, which was silenced mostly throughout Lent. So that coming mm -hmm. back is this great hymn of praise. Um, I think is one of my other favorite aspects of of Easter that we're you know we're called to sing this this text, which I think speaks to who we are as a liturgical people to give God glory and praise. Um, and rightfully so during this holy season. I like how yeah. many parishes celebrate the sacraments during the Easter season. Mm -hmm. The Easter season mm -hmm. is often uh, the time for um, First Communion uh, mm -hmm. in the parish, First yeah. Communions. It's often the time for confirmations, both mm -hmm. of which are uh, com you know, uh, complete baptism. Confirmation yeah. seals baptism, and all of that culminates in the in the Eucharist. But um, the weddings are celebrated uh, during the Easter season. Ordinations are celebrated during yeah. the Easter mm -hmm. season. Um, it, I all of those connect to the life of baptism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's so a, the sacraments, of course, give us identity in Christ and what we're called to embody. Um, the others, so the yeah. East, Easter season is, of course, a, a, a perfect time. For those celebrations. Well, when you think that every sacrament, one of its, in addition to the specific outcome of the sacrament, like reconciliation of forgiveness of sins, marriage, the bond of these two people, right? All right. In addition to that, every sacrament shapes us more and more yeah. and more into the image of Christ that we were initially baptized mm -hmm. to be. Right. So right. I mean, that's what we mean when to, to live out a sacramental life, right? Yeah. Is yeah. a frequent participation in this, in these sacraments, which yeah. in turn shape us more into the image of Christ. And I think we might see even the reception uh, of yes. communion um, yes. ap apart from the vigil, right? Um, which, it is perfectly acceptable and I think is is the vision of the RCIA to do it um, in its pure form apart from the vigil. So talk, we might encounter that as talk well. Talk about that. What is that, Danielle? Just for listeners who might not know what you're talking about. For those who have been baptized in another faith tradition, so for example, if you were baptized in the Lutheran Church and then you want to become part of, of the Catholic Christian community, we receive you, um, we ask you to make a profession of faith, um, that you believe and profess all that the Catholic Church um, Holds. believes and teaches, yep. Yep. Holds. Um, so you make this public profession of faith, and then we receive you into our community. Um, one of the, the reasons why we might do it apart from the vigil is because we recognize the dignity of your baptism, right. Um, right. that you are in union with us already because of the baptism you received. Um, and so the, uh, the option to do that at an, another time apart from, from the vigil is, is why we would do it that way. And the Easter season makes perfect sense. We're going to mm -hmm. take a break, our last break. When we come back, Timothy and uh, Danielle, let's talk about the texts yes. of the Easter liturgies. Stay with us. For more focus on the liturgy right after these messages.
Community is core to Catholic Charities' founding mission. For more than 100 years, we have met people and families where they are, serving anyone in need, regardless of their faith, gender, race, or ethnicity. As our world absorbs the economic, political, and social aftershocks of the pandemic, 50% or more of the 6 million people living in Cook and Lake counties have little or no savings. They are a paycheck away from zero. We are deeply grateful to everyone in the Catholic Charities community who partners with us to alleviate the suffering of the people we serve and offer them a better path forward. We are witnessing a message of mercy and hope to a world very much in need. Learn more at catholiccharities.net. There is no doubt this life is short. It is in you I trust to spread your truths, your goodness, and love. It is you who will give a leader to our church. Who will fill these shoes? For more than 20 years, Catholic Charities Adult Protective Services has been advocating for seniors who are the victims of abuse, neglect, confinement, or financial exploitation. With our partners at local, city, and state agencies, our trained case managers follow through on every concern that is brought to our attention in a cooperative way to ensure that our seniors are safe and protected. According to the Illinois Department on Aging, last year nearly 21,000 cases of elder abuse were reported in Illinois. Of these, only 5% were reported by seniors themselves. So raising awareness is an important part of this issue. If you are concerned about a senior you know, call 800-252-8966. That's 800-252-8966. With your help, we can stop elder abuse and look out for the seniors in our lives. Amidst hallelujahs, we have our final segment of Focus on the Liturgy. We are breaking open the Easter liturgies um, and, the, and, and the Easter season. Um, Danielle, uh, Timothy and I are, are here in the studio. You're remote today, but um, uh, during that last break, Timothy, he said, that, he said the texts of the season are one of, his fa one of the favorite elements of the Easter liturgies. Timothy, what do you mean? Well, I, we have... Lots of rich texts. I mean, uh, beginning even as we, we talk about the vigil, we have the, the exultet and all those prayers, but all the collects, we have the sequence on Easter Sunday, but even the scriptures. And that's that's kind of where one of my favorite pieces is all of Easter season, we read the Acts of the Apostles. And what I love about that, in, its, in a sense, it... I'll stretch the word mystagogy a bit. Um, it, it's sort of no, a it is. it's a mystagogy on on what it means to be community. Yes. And so now that we as a community have renewed our baptismal promises together, we hear the story of the early community, um, both of of them flourishing, but eventually some of the struggles that come uh, in, into play in the midst of of that flourishing. Um, and we have the opportunity in that to reflect on our current communal life. How are we living together? Um, how are we holding things together and caring for the poor and the marginalized, the widow and the or or orphan? Um, all those things we're gonna hear in this story. How is our community growing? How is our community struggling even um, in the midst of, of what's going on? And to keep kind of all that in perspective, I think in, in this season um, of hearing the story of our ancestors that helped us to get very where we are cool. today. Very is, cool. Of course, yes, it's very mystagogical. Yeah. So uh, just as, as, as Timothy mentioned during the Easter season, 
every Sunday Mass. The first reading, which normally comes from the Old Testament, is taken from the Acts of the Apostles for the whole, the only time during the year and, where and, the and first that, reading is not the Old Testament. Right, and that happens even when sacraments are celebrated. Yes. So even if it be on a weekday, you know, confirmation on a Tuesday, it comes from the Acts of the Apostles, um, and that's how important it is. Yep, yep. Uh, Danielle, uh, so Timothy talked about the first reading um, this year in year A. So that's, that's what Timothy, you mentioned, yep. is every cycle, mm -hmm. right? A, yep. B, or C uh, in the three-year lectionary, every year. But this year, in year A, it's the Easter, the Easter lectionary is, is pretty, pretty specific in terms of the second reading, Danielle. What is that? That it all comes from, Saint, from the first letter of Peter. Ev okay, he's putting se me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the lectionary here. <laughs> in, I'm in year C editing right well, now. It, so. <laughs> so that's in your mind. No, in year A, in year A, um, every second reading uh, yeah. uh, for every Sunday of Easter comes from the first letter of St. Peter. And it's a pretty continuous reading. Yes, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, do we well, read the whole? I don't know almost, if we read the whole thing. It's but almost. Because it's a shorter letter. Right, right. And But I, I, uh, I think... The reason that that is fits in with everything we've been talking about yeah. during the show. The letter of the first letter of St. Peter was written to a very young Christian community. Yeah. They had just been baptized. Yeah. And so it's it's filled with um, with uh, direction and guidance in what does it mean to live yeah. now that you have been baptized. So it it, it truly is, in a sense, it, it's, it's answering the so what question, yeah, right? Yeah, very much so. And I think uh, this is my lament, in a sense, uh, is that it, it often isn't preached on because the Gospels are also so rich in right, this season. Right, right. But one of the beautiful things about Easter, in, in my opinion, is really, unlike ordinary time, um, in Easter, all three of these readings are more intimately connected in, in terms of theme yes, and what message yeah. and, imagery. And, yeah. So, to, so yeah, take that second reading cause it is pretty, uh, I, I uh, it is pretty important in, in helping us to understand what it means to live out this baptism. I have just a few quick examples if that's yeah, okay yeah. with you too. So sure. last Sunday we heard you from St. From the first letter of Peter in the second reading, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith. Yeah. This coming Sunday, conduct yourselves with reverence so that your faith and hope are in God. I mean, the, the fourth Sunday of Easter uh, from the second reading, be patient when you suffer for doing what is good, for Christ left you an example that you should follow. This is what it, this is how you should live now that yeah. you've been baptized. When he suffered, he didn't threaten. Instead, he handed himself over right? Um, the fifth Sunday of Easter. The, the, Danielle, I think, this is, I think this is one of your favorites. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. Oh, yeah. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful life. I'm glad you you mentioned that because that is specifically quoted in the Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy. <laughs> yes, it and is. One right? of my my uh, assessments of Easter texts is they tell us how to be a liturgical people. They there, are, especially the Acts of the Apostle. Uh, Acts of the Apostles is profoundly liturgical. What we hear on the second Sunday of Easter of, you know, they devoted themselves to um, the Christian life, the community, and to the prayers. Um, when we hear the readings of the, the journey to Emmaus about encountering that, Christ Emmaus. in oh the breaking of the bread, yeah. it's who we're called to be to participate in so the texts are profoundly liturgical oh my gosh yes and and maybe just for the listeners so pay it like you said timothy pay attention to, and pay attention to the other texts of the mass too um again just a few examples from the missile if if you guys don't mind yeah you always have great examples that i miss during the mass and i'm like wait <laughs> so, we heard during the octave from this uh, opening prayer grant that what we celebrate by professing the faith we may express in deeds. And, and I think for all three of us, the opening prayer from last Sunday's Mass, uh, the second Sunday, that we might grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been washed, mm -hmm. by whose spirit we have been reborn, by whose blood we have been redeemed. All right? Uh, uh, Monday of the fourth week, 
putting off your old self with all its ways, may we live as Christ did, for you have conformed us to his nature. That's an opening prayer from Monday of the fourth week of Easter. From the fifth Sunday of Easter, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make holy, to make new in holy baptism, may bear much fruit. Yeah. I, that's the, the texts themselves tell us so what. What so what absolutely that you, right right Daniel? Uh, yeah. Pope Francis he, he stole my line the liturgy <laughs> is the first catechism but when I heard him say that I'm like hey <laughs> that's my line but really though I mean what you're saying here the colics they they're filled with theological images that uh, situate what's the purpose of baptism yeah uh, uh, we just got a couple minutes Danielle but uh, mm -hmm. the texts as the first catechism the liturgy uh, what what do you mean what does that mean for you. They teach us. What they teach we pray us. is what we believe, right? It's the the old axiom lex credendi, lex vivendi, that the law of prayer is the um, the law of belief and so in the law of life. So that what we pray is what we believe and how we live. So the texts of the liturgy are not arbitrarily written. They're 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 very intentional. They reflect not only what season we're in. They point us to help us understand what it means to be in this Christian life. So not only are the scriptures formative for us, but the prayers of the liturgy tell us the story of salvation and how we're to internalize that. I, it's that image that we've used, uh, both uh, Pope John Paul, Pope Benedict have used liturgy as a school. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, mm -hmm. and, that, and we talk, mm -hmm. you guys, we talk about that on the show all the time. Yeah. The liturgy mm -hmm. shapes us. It molds us. It, 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 uh, it tells us what, it, what we believe, yes, but it also tells us what, how we should be in this yeah. world, who God yeah. is and what God wants from us and what God wants for us. These texts yeah. teach us. There's a, one of the colli our colleagues at, at LTP in workshops, he often uh, will when we're talking about liturgical texts or things, he'll often uh, ask those kinds of questions. What does this tell us about God? What does this tell us about the church? What does it tell us about ourselves, about the community? Yep. Uh, just to kind of keep keep those kinds of questions um, in front of us. Uh, the whole Easter season yeah. does that. So for our listeners, yeah. just allow yourself to let the Sundays break open, yeah. reveal to you the depth of God's love for you, what God wants for you, what God wants from you, right? Yes. Let let the liturgies of the Easter season, let them guide you in the, so what? Now that you have renewed your baptism at Easter, so what? What That's does it right. mean? What difference does it make? Yeah, I just to piggyback on that. If you if you have or don't have, uh, go get one. But a daily missile, even um, because this is an opportunity uh, to sit at home in your private prayer, um, yes, to reflect on these prayers that Todd has graciously shared. Um, yeah, they are rich. Danielle and Timothy, next month's show, dead middle between <laughs> Ascension and Pentecost. Perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it'll, it'll be, be perfect. All spirit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So join us next month. Uh, fourth Wednesday of May uh, during the original uh, Pentecost Novena. That's right. For Focus on the Liturgy. Until then, God bless everyone. Bye bye. Bye. People lift your voice, proclaim it to the world. Let heaven rejoice and earth be glad. Let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every land. Rise in splendor, shake off your sleep, put on your robes of joy, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the song unto